Linda, I just heard Dr. Anderson give a fantastic talk at the annual meeting of the North American Menopause Society on a, a subject of very importance to women, and that is really maintaining the beauty of your skin as you age. And I wonder if you could first say a couple of things that you feel are important uh, for women to understand about how their face is going to change by decade, let's just say. Sure. I like to use the analogy of um, the inverted triangle of aging. So when we're young, our face is like a heart, or an inverted triangle. And then as we get older, we start to have changes. Starting in your 30s, you start to get collagen loss. You see like a little fine line. You start to get decrease in fat pads, usually in the temples, the temples on the forehead and in the cheeks. So it starts to get a little more hollow. And then you start to get bone resorption and the bone contracts. You're talking about now the bone in your face. The bone in your face. So the bone around your eye, the bone that supports your jawline shrinks. And women start to not just have fine lines and wrinkles, they start to have sagging and jowls as they hit menopause. Mm -hmm. So those changes will take our inverted triangle and make a triangle where everything falls. Mm -hmm. There's less bone, there's less fat. There's more lines because in the superficial portions of our skin structures, there's less collagen, less elastin, so you'd have less suppleness of the skin. Mm -hmm. Skin feels rougher. And there's less hyaluronic acid, which is the major protein in the skin that goes away as we get older as well. So there's just moisture retention. It's kind of the scaffolding under the skin. Correct, exactly. And the scaffolding gets deeper. So you start with the surface, then you go to collagen, elastin, hyaluronic acid, mm -hmm. then you go to the fat pads, then you go to the bone. So when a woman comes to me at in her mid-50s, and she says, my, eye, my eyelids kind of fall over my eye, well, that's because the fat pad's gone, the skeleton support is smaller, contracted. Mm -hmm. There's no support system for that skin. It has to go somewhere. The nasal labial folds, where they might be just a fold in your 30s, now start to hang over because the bone around the mouth is contracted. So just like it feels like your midriff is getting bigger, also sort of the midriff of your face is getting bigger. Exactly. And you talked about a number of things that women could do to try and help prevent that from happening. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about some of the main things that are beneficial. Sure. If we start again from the outside in, we can start with the surface of the skin, good sun protection. Topical therapies, including topical retinoids, will help kind of change the things that happen in menopause, like a decrease in estrogen causing a decrease in collagen. Topical retinoids what will... What would be an example of a topical retinoid? Retin-A. Okay. Everybody knows retin-A. Mm -hmm. So retin-A will shut off um, proteins called matrix metalloproteinases that break down collagen. Mm -hmm. They'll also inhibit collagenase, which breaks down collagen. So it tries to kind of counter effects the um, estrogens devastating effects on collagen. Mm -hmm. um, it also will norm normalize melanocytes so you get less blotchiness. It will cause an angiogenesis in the skin which means dilated blood vessels, more blood flow to the skin. So basically trying to get back all the youthful things that we had maybe in our, in our 20s and early 30s that are now gone. What about the oral like resveratrol and those kinds? So uh, you know the, the verdict is still on oral. I think that um, for skin health we want to penetrate into the dermis and I think that a few companies have modified good antioxidants to decrease oxidative stress on the skin, or uh, topical resveratrol, topical green tea, topical caffeine, topical stable vitamin C. They all work very well mm -hmm. to protect against free radicals and decrease oxidative stress, which will make your skin healthier. So, obviously, protecting the skin from the sun damage and smoking, you mentioned. Correct. Getting rid of smoking. Yeah. Are there any nutritional or dietary things that are helpful? So, again, on the same lines anything that decreases inflammation and oxidative stress you know avoiding processed foods trans fats increasing your omega-3s um, fish oils will also help the skin and just give you a healthier lifestyle and a healthier skin healthier organs they all kind of work together what about improving sleep and lowering stress uh, just all of that helps because cortisol has very detrimental effects mm -hmm. on various inflammatory mediators in our skin they're so all interrelated your general overall well-being is great for your skin absolutely and uh, if someone wanted to take it further than those kinds of matters what would be some of the products or things that they might apply to their skin that could be helpful? 
Well, we touched upon the things you can apply to the skin. They can come into a physician's office. Mm -hmm. They can also do peels to improve the surface and mm -hmm. texture and tone of their skin. They can do fractionated laser treatments to even out some fine lines and help with tone and texture and make the skin a little bit more smooth and youthful. Mm -hmm. um, and then for people that want to take it even further, you can do injectable therapies to help restructure the skin and support tissues that you've lost during that time. So there's really quite a bit that you could do. Correct. In the, if someone has already gone past the, the point where it's now noticeable, is reversing the aging appearance possible? I wouldn't say reversing, but I would stay, say restoring about five to ten years mm -hmm. of aging that has happened in any individual as possible. And if a person were going to really take this seriously, is there an optimum time to start planning your future in terms of your skin's well-being? Yes, I think um, it's, it think as early as possible. I think universal precautions and recommendations should start in your mid-20s. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome.